Boom, and we are live from Yuma, Arizona, and good evening everybody. Welcome to Monday night on the border town of Yuma, Tuesday Arizona. Night. Is Tuesday. it Tuesday or is it Monday? Yeah, it's Tuesday, it's Tuesday night. night. That's right, it's Tuesday, Tuesday night. night. So I'm getting, you, mean, you get that phenomenon where you, you have to remind yourself, you ever do that when you've been on the road? Well, you've been four years in a van where... Most of the time when you're days, living on the road, you don't know what day it is. Sometimes you don't know what time it is. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes you don't even know what month it is. You just kind of... It's so peaceful. You know what month it is when it gets cold. And I've seen you in the snow before in... Uh, where was that? Chicago, where you were crunching through. You woke up in the morning and you had your... Uh, your orange wool cap on and everything and you're like man this is unbelievable and you were crunching through the snow and good evening everybody yeah. welcome to uh i wonder if i put the right night on there i might have put monday night. i don't know what i put on there how you doing robert jj good evening i was just watching elvis is live from earlier it's uh good evening everybody it's difficult you always want to bring the best quality you can but you're always at the mercy of data uh, whatever the data is and whatever the cell does and let's exactly. face it um you know three weeks ago how you doing tara how you doing almost uber three weeks ago when you went live from the around the bus stop there at that uh at that park yeah it was really hard to hold the signal and you were live for about what a uh, half hour or something right, like that. right right but i've noticed if you wait till it's later in the day when the population clears out of Los Algodones, all of a sudden the signal, signal acquisition gets better. But, you know, you're going to get pixelation and stuff like that. Enough that I decided if I do, uh, which I probably, at this point in time, I, I definitely try to do the Mexico Baja Peninsula adventure. I would invest in a Mexican SIM card and get data you know 200 gigs of uh of high speed data in mexico which is available in there right and then you've sort of solved the problem i was talking to marshall about some of the equipment that the big time the ice besides and the other people use to live stream they right. use what's called that bonded cellular technology it's actually taking two to four different companies sell bandwidth and creating a super highway out of those uh, for but the investment that the you investment have to make is, is huge yeah and you know how you doing scott batteries hey, motors uh, and then the, you know, the you plan want, yeah the batteries last three hours and if right. you want to have a day in and do a stream you got to lug two batteries around which are 350 dollars to pop those batteries you have to have a full backpack to carry that stuff you have to pay a modem fee every month to uh, to run them. In other words, if you use, say, T-Mobile and Verizon, you need to have those two plug-in modems, so you're paying the data fee for them. Uh, so the, the cost just becomes prohibitive. You know, when you get up yep. maybe around 100,000 subs, if you ever make it to that level, then it becomes uh, worth it. Right. Because the beauty is you're streaming in 1080p, which is full high definition uh, right. uh, stuff. I've been, let's see, Share Flare, I've been gone too long from someone who I felt was a positive influence in my life. Uh, well, I hope that they're back again. Uh, Oh, yeah. Did you see that video I posted to win? That was really scary. If you didn't see that on the Rosie Murphy channel, uh, that windstorm in El Centro on um, Sunday night was, uh, I'm sure Marshall's had higher winds in vans, but that was, you could actually hear the stuff hitting the side of the van. And I got up at uh, 2.45 in the morning and shot a video. It was so loud. Yeah. And I woke up in the morning, and my antenna had actually almost come totally unscrewed in the uh, in the night there, so it was uh, scary. Oh, you're talking about me? Okay, Cher. Ruben Soul and I was paying something like yeah, fifteen Cher OS. I can't pay that money. Thank you very much, bad hemorrhoid suffer. We're doing good. Uh, it was it was terrible. That that wind was howling. And I was so nervous that uh, uh, either a light pole in the parking lot was going to come down or a tree was going to come down. Plus, uh, even I stepped out at 2.45 in the morning, I was getting dust in my in yeah. my eyes. I had to take my bottle of drinking water and actually rinse my uh, eyes out. I don't know how anybody lives in El Centro, to tell you the truth. It's, uh, <laughs> 
it's you know everybody's got to be somewhere and god bless them agriculture is the uh, backbone of america of course and all that so you know why my chat's not in johnny west how you doing loved your new video i want to thank the people that um um watch the a night in tijuana it was long promised and i was finally able to take some time uh marshall had well over two hours in the chair uh today at the dentist so i had time to just sit there peacefully and put that video how you doing jk no cal nice to see you somebody had a high powered electric van i um you know it's you know it's powerful when you kind of react to your own videos that you put up and i uh you know i felt heart wrenching as far as i've made a lot of cinematic videos over the years and uh, this one really touched my heart not only did it have the longest single take that i ever put into a cinematic video because usually like modern cinematic videos they're changing the scene every two seconds like a disco like a music video right every two seconds it's uh, you know and it's a lot for the mind to comprehend so there's a lot of risk when you do a super long take that you're gonna hold the audience on there but I thought it was so compelling to go down that uh, street and then of course five minutes after that video went off I got busted by the uh, Tijuana policeman that came over and uh, uh, basically almost attacked me uh, for having the uh, uh, camera so I appreciate all the uh, all the comments that I've gotten on that and all the uh, well support. But, you know you got I feel in my heart and no. I'll just say this and I tried to superimpose the uh, church on the end of it because the Cathedral of Tijuana because uh, Mexico is one of those dichotomy uh, uh, places that on the one hand there's a very strong root of Catholicism there and there's a real uh, sense of family and other things and I thought the Christina Perry jar of hearts was was very appropriate that because you know men come down to partake of that and it really is it's to me it's like a heartless act uh, of uh, sexual conquest and I felt like it's it's it runs so counter to what the culture is but then again you have the realities of economics and education and things like that thank you mouse toe so uh, I know well, some people were uh, touched in the heart, and when you do a video like that, you wanna you wanna touch people's emotions, and you want them to see what a real mercantile operation that uh, Tijuana so, can be. But also, you said the street food. Yeah. And so, that, yeah. Rosie, since you mentioned that subject of you know, of of, of the legalized you know, uh, gentlemen's clubs and all that prostitution in Mexico, uh, you look at. Uh, a country like Holland, Amsterdam, and Am Amsterdam is not a poverty-stricken country. There's a lot of people that are educated in Holland. How you doing, Amsterdam. Chairman of the board, the Canadian Clipper? How you doing, Norm Chairman of the board, nice Norm you. How you doing? Good evening. But what do you? Let's just say Holland, Amsterdam. You know the red light district. Holland is a pretty well-off country right yes, there's a lot of people a very, that are educated it's a prosperous country there's a lot yes. of people who have money yeah. so um and they have a red light district there amsterdam everybody knows about it you know they've heard about it all over the world so hello um what is the difference between those girls there and the girls in tijuana it's essentially the same Hell you business. Doing, hot frog. It's essentially the same. Hey, biker bay. Business, right? As to it is. Let's think about how the why would the <laughs> dynamics of that be different? I think in Mexico. I think in Amsterdam, it's more of a tip of the hat that there's an element of demand within, and I don't think people no. necessarily travel to Amsterdam to partake of that. Right. I would wonder. Would you think most are locals that uh, that go over there? And I think it's just a recognition that if we're going to have it, we want to have it in an area that we can control. And I was in Europe well, in 1974, okay? Seven years before Marshall was born, I was walking the streets of Amsterdam mm -hmm. as a, I don't know, 15-year-old or whatever and saw that 16-year-old and saw that women in the, in the windows and uh, the shades open and stuff like that. And I didn't particularly feel one way or another, you know, we would all, oh, we're going to walk past the red light uh, district. But I think it's a, 
tip of the hat to acknowledge it. Did it exist? It's going to happen. And if we can legalize it in the, in the city, then we can kind of monitor it and make sure that we have a higher police presence maybe in that uh, area. Well, it's kind of like, um, like my point of making with Amsterdam is that it... Hey, space. It's um, It goes on all over the world. It goes hey, on in, in, in a lot of different... Uh, it, it's on the Internet right now in America. It's, on, it's in the United... Uh, Sometimes that kind of freezes yeah. up. You gotta wait. But yeah. the bottom line is, is that it's happening in the world, just like illegal gun sales, just like illegal drug sales. There's a lot of things that are deemed illegal, but things are still going on in the world. It's only shifted from the streets to the internet because of the internet. And hey, there's all kinds of women that are that are. <laughs> that are escorts, even in the United States, there's, there's college girls, there's hey, girls that fly. come from wealthy, educated families that are doing this. It's all over the internet. Uh, and I think with Tijuana, uh, putting it out there, having the zone for it, it, it gives you that atmosphere and entertainment yeah, perspective I my title to Tuesday <laughs> of the industry. In other words, uh, in other words, okay, how do most people meet uh, escorts in the United States besides the Nevada is legalized internet. and they go on the internet now when you go to Amsterdam or Thailand or Tijuana you get that atmosphere of the girls being right there and it's a whole different it's like saying you know uh, it's a whole I think it's pretty cool that 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 still exists that we're not living in this robotic police state that everything we have to do is on the internet and that's how most people are programmed right now. A lot of people are socializing on the internet, like you guys on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, and for us, know, JK. And, and for uh, us to bring you hey, guys Ray, real life, doing? real life content. Hi, Pepper. Of, of the escort adult entertainment industry, uh, in real life, it's bringing it to a whole other level because we're bringing you real life on YouTube. And what most people, what's the difference? There's no difference between people socializing here on YouTube or me calling up an escort on the internet. I'm using the internet to get my interaction with humanity. And now we've took it to the other level. We're bringing you guys real content and real life and bringing it to the internet. See what I'm saying? So yeah, that's, that's the way I, you so, know, it's the way I feel, but there's an acknowledgement that this, I, I think a lot of societies just, you know, like Mexico, they understand that there's the opportunities for gainful employment. The uh, right. education system is not, I'm not sure what the requirement to go to, uh, it might be eighth grade or something like that. In, uh, there's a lot of women in America that are strippers, that are studying to be teachers, studying to yeah, be of course. lawyers, studying study, to be... Yeah. Uh, 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 RN nurses that are want to pay their I school loans that. off. I there's all girls. There's websites out there. I'm looking for a sugar daddy. There's American girls that that have uh, hey, Juice, what's that up? have school loans and their parents aren't millionaires. They can't pay for their loans and they're out Thank there. You, they're out there as escorts. They're out there as as um, hey Nicole, how you doing? As strippers. They're not. They're out there and stuff. It's happening even in the United States of America. Women. Bottom line is, any way you slice it or dice it. Yeah, let me give a pop for uh, yeah. Nicole here, her cooking, uh, channel. cooking channel, and post a link on that, uh, Nicole, because I'm really enjoying her. I think she's really hit the full measure of uh, her skill set, and I think it's exciting to see the things that she's putting up now in the, uh, in the way of uh, not only meals that look good, but they're, they're presented well. So... Um, let's see, um, yeah, she can cook, so, well, it's just my, you know, as Marshall said, if you really wanted to make your video complete, Rosie, you would have put a couple of the, one or Almost two of the people, people that are face planted on the sidewalk in, right. uh, in Tijuana uh, to capture the real reality, but I didn't get that sense as much as uh, in Mexicali, where I, I saw a little more of that. Plus, I just, I wanted to capture the, I didn't want to sanitize the view of Mexico, and I didn't want it to be a Chamber of Commerce piece of why you should come to visit Tijuana. But, 
you said like you particularly enjoyed the food, you know, capturing the yeah. uh, food scenes and uh, things like that. Now, Marsha will say, Rosie never puts that phone down and she's always recording because I got to capture literally 200 clips to pull 30 clips out of there today right. that are worthy of being in a uh well, and, and this is so that's why i'm i'm continuously filming because i'm i'm trying to produce something with and right. i use the term art loosely on uh, on youtube but i'm trying to produce something that uh, can touch the emotions and make people and, feel really grasp the gritty right. the grittiness where you have the sublime realities of a limousine pulling up to the Chicago club where you literally have guys that'll drop a thousand dollars in a night in those kind of clubs but right. and you contrast that with the poor souls hey Sam how you doing honey you contrast that with the poor souls sitting outside that uh, church of the, the cathedral yeah. of Tijuana and the one guy particularly uh, uh, hunched down and just looked totally beaten there on that uh, sidewalk and just... Uh, Let me give you that's my... Just, um... That's the, you know, to me at the end, that's the comfort that those people derive of Tijuana is through church and things, uh, through the uh, church and things like that down there. And then literally a block away, you have a whole nother, you have a whole nother world uh, going on there. Uh, I, I want to give you my opinion about uh, the beautiful Sam Telfer in the chat. There we go. I want to give you my opinion on. Hey, Karina. When Rosie edits these videos and puts these videos together and spends four to let's face it, she spends four and easily three to six hours on one video. Okay, and if somebody's going to put that much time and work, I mean, you're talking about three to six hours of your life per day. And if somebody's going to put that much work into a video, this is just my opinion. I think she should have an exclusive Patreon account. And those videos that Rosie edits and puts together, she should have Patreon subscribers hey, Jen, that would be willing to support her for that. Because you're talking about, um, I would never take, you know, personally for me, three to six hours of my time per day to make a video and uh not want to thank you Hopper. not want to get people to support me on that it's just it's a lot of work it's a lot of time that she puts into it and i and that's just my opinion that's like where i stand with that if i ever got into editing videos i would yeah. exclusively be for just for patreon i can subscribers. understand that. i wouldn't want to take the time out of my me, life though, you know a lot of people have said rosie why don't you start a uh patreon or something like that yeah why don't you do that why don't then? you sell merchandise and do things right like that's that. another thing as far as the Patreon goes, I never wanted to separate my channel first class citizens from like second class citizens, you know what I mean? Right. Like I I I would feel and this is strange and please don't hate me. I know D puts exclusive uh, videos out for Patreon. Uh, I oh, know D does have I Patreon? know the yeah, I oh, know cool. the porch uh, has hangouts that are Pat Patreon right members but i i i would just i would feel to uh, to me i would just feel awkward uh, like this is just for this the special select few and let the let let the monetary chips fall where they may in terms of people that choose to be a, a tip as opposed to collecting taxes and i'm appreciative of that i don't talk about it a lot on here because you know, thankfully, PayPal gives people the confidentiality to uh, do things because, as we know, when things are done in the light yeah. of YouTube, there's uh, there can be uh, blowback on all that. And it's it's a I love it because it's a quiet way that people can just uh, show support. But uh, is, I mean, I know it sounds weird, Marshall, but I just feel strange creating two separate classes how, of how long did you know it take? I, mean? I understand how long did it? How many hours did it take to make? Uh, the the video on Tijuana about three and a half hours. To okay, do so let's just say almost four hours. Let's just round it out. And now think about it: if Rosie were to make one video a day like that, that's four hours out of your life every day. That's four hours where you could be streaming live. That's four hours 
where you could be exercising. That's four hours where you could be going into a club. That's four hours where you could do whatever you want with it, right? It's your time. And if you add that up four hours, let's just say seven days a week. Look at how many hours that is. That's a lot of hours that a person takes out of their life. And it's a hobby. Rosie's videos on editing, it's a hobby. I'm just giving my opinion. Yeah, that's fine. If it she's is. going to do a hobby, why not get... Um, it's amateur videography. Yeah, it's amateur you know? videography yeah. is what she, what she enjoys. And why not have people that would appreciate Rosie putting that time into it? That's a lot of time to put into one video. And <laughs> Nicole. That's just my opinion, you know. Um, yeah, it's, but, it's, um, it's fine. A lot of people have expressed that. Do some exclusive uh, Exclusive content, content yeah. Um, so, I, I guess I would, I guess I just feel embarrassed doing that kind of thing uh, myself because I don't well, think my, I don't think special content is worthy. Now you say the hours are put in, but if you really yeah. love yeah. doing something, then you find the time to work that into the schedule. Now we've been out of Tijuana for a, well, a few days. So I finally, uh, finally got to that. It's the re well, same reason I don't sell merch, you know. Because let I me just, give you a, a typical, a typical day of, of I, what is, I what it's like to be I with Rosie as far as. Mug on that. I wouldn't want yeah. my mug on a coffee okay. cup in the picture morning. Picture this for a second, guys. <laughs> you're walking. Picture this for a second, guys. You're walking with, you're walking with Rosie and Tijuana for at least. You're walking with her. We're, we we hey, walk. Hey Jessica, how you doing? We walked on the street streets of Tijuana hey, for hey, that Madonna. one day we were there for eight hours and 27 minutes I still remember that one day that she picked up all this footage and out of the eight hours and 27 minutes easily easily Rosie me and Rosie were walking on the street easily five to six hours now think about it you're hanging out with someone you're hanging out with your friend and they have a camera in their hand you know, for five to six hours, and they're taking all these clips, and it's physically, it's physically, mentally overwhelming. That now, thank you. Rosie Charlie. is a very Rosie's in shape for her age. I mean, she can <laughs> she can she can walk to six seven miles. She can walk to a six seven hour uh, uh, six seven hour chute six seven miles no problem. She's very physically fit for her age, but the mental energy. Uh, and time that it takes to do that. You're talking five to six hours of video recording. And it's, to me, that's just, it's, it's, a, it's a mental dream. And uh, I commend her oh, for... Thank you, Andres. For loving her, 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 her passion. And then not only the five... So it took her five to six hours to get all that footage. And then it takes her another uh, three to four hours to put it together. Now you're talking about ten hours. So really... That video that Rosie put out, it took her at least six hours to get the coverage and another four hours to edit it and put it together. You're talking about 10 hours. Well, I did get a day uh, in Tijuana and a night in Tijuana right. out of that. Uh, but uh, that's a lot video. of time. That's a yeah. lot of energy. She enjoys doing it. That's her passion, just like I well, enjoy making motorhome videos. What would videos. you say, like, if somebody was, uh, <laughs> you know, when you see RV devs and she does her paintings. And right. Things, Undoubtedly, she puts hours into some of those right. uh, paintings. This but is you our don't, work. You don't see exactly. that. Yeah, I mean, she's 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 putting works of art. Uh, thank you, Vicky. Right. She's like, and I feel the same way. You're given a canvas, you get a blank SD exactly. card in your camera, and, that's and you got to go out there and paint the picture of uh, Tijuana at exactly. night by being balanced. You know what you have to capture. You know the risks when you go out there and, right. and walk down what I call hook a row with a camera in full full view and you right. can see some of the reactions and things. But you cannot come away. Hey, Sugar Cane, you cannot come away from watching a video like that without feeling like you really captured the essence of what, uh, what T1 is like. Right. The unvarnished, unpolished in some cases turd and in some cases the uh <clears throat> the stark beauty well, of the place my, my metaphor that i have for you is imagine if you were an artist if you were a painter right if you drew people imagine Painters. if you were if you imagine if you were an artist and you paint 
your art and you go to an art festival and you just put your artwork out there for people to look at but nobody bought your artwork and that's the way what I see with the extreme uh, time and effort of video editing a, a product you, it's your artwork it's your canvas that you've created it's a lot of time and energy and effort put into that uh, you're sharing it with people you're sharing your life it's your hobby you enjoy that it's your passion that's great but I would just imagine if I'm an artist and I I made up all this art I painted all these pictures and I put it in front of everybody at a festival but nobody's really uh, buying it they're just looking at it and that's just my opinion when you put so much time into something I look at YouTube look whether we like it or not it's it's it, it is it is a business it's a job whatever you want to call it <coughs> people are making money doing it but the bottom line is it's just my opinion somebody who puts makes that artwork and puts that time into it it would just be nice to be compensated for that time and effort and have people that have, have a following and it's just like an artist selling their artwork. That's all. You know, interesting. The only thing you know? I regret about that video is it didn't have my drone with me, or I would have sent that thing slowly up in the sky about uh, about 20 feet per per 20 seconds or so, and had to slow <coughs> lift off from Tijuana and got totally airborne, like above the cathedral and all that stuff, right. like like just moving away from the uh, from the city and and stuff. Because I did see. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, cats. I did see a guy that was flying and getting a drone airborne <coughs> outside of his uh, dentist's uh, place. Yeah, that drone would have been awesome. You, but remember, guys, I had the horror of seeing almost a $2,000 drone drop from 50 feet in the sky, dead drop, hit the ground and get busted up. And I had to pay $250 to have that, uh, to have that thing put back together again and of course I'm a little gun shy about flying the uh, flying the drone again of course I flew that over the Beverly Hillbillies mansion all over Beverly Hills and uh, all kinds of different places but I'll get my confidence back to uh, t to take that uh, out again and, and and my opinion uh, yeah not everything is about sex and beer yeah it's um, I guess one of the joys of being 61 is that, you know, I, I goof around and beach play and stuff like that. But uh, as Marshall gets older, his world will become, you know, other things will start to uh, rise in importance in his life. And I think uh, he already holds personal relationships dear with a very close circle of people that he communicates with. but. To have a wider appreciation of the whole canvas of life and, uh, um, you know, the emotions that people have and the real emotions and the, the other things that are to see out there in the world and, uh, you know, how do people get connected in such a, you know, there's that undertone of uh, Catholicism well, you gotta, in Mexico and there's... Yeah, you, you got to remember that uh, I am a testosterone driven alpha male rosie is a transgendered female who admittedly is on estrogen hormones so rosie does and testosterone blockers and testosterone yeah. blockers now rosie has the intelligence and and uh, uh thank you she's Dave. handy she's intelligent as someone who would be a very intelligent handyman She's literally living two, two existences. She's got the intelligence and skill set of a real of a person who's a real handyman. She can fix radios. She can do construction. She can do all kinds of things. Oh, that okay, a, Joseph. Good to see you. Sorry, Marshall. Go ahead. Yeah, she can do all kinds of things that a man can do. But at the same time, uh, her hormones uh, and her. Well, her her um, age you know? exactly her hormones you know, I play and, younger on the streets of, and and her things, mind and know? her and her mindset uh, as a day-to-day -day life is more like a woman now if Rosie stopped the hormones and she stopped the testosterone blocker and she got her testosterone levels back up there's no reason that Rosie wouldn't have a, a, a you know 
uh, a high testosterone sex drive uh, like any other uh, man out there. Uh, and she would be, you know, tearing the walls down. But the bottom line is, she chooses now. I've said my opinion about this. That that's fine. There's You're allowed to voice. This yeah, is a the, open there, platform. There, there, You're allowed there's, to voice. Exactly. Your there are transgender women that are post-op, and they have to take the hormones because yeah. they've already done the whole surgery. Right. There's a lot of transgender they just women don't need to be on the that are that are that are that are pre-op, and they still have their equipment and plumbing. Now, some of them are on hormones whether but they want to go with the whole surgery and go through the whole thing or not and some of them even if they decide to keep their plumbing well they have that choice some girls want it to work and they want to drive and some girls don't want it to work they don't want to drive so every person is different you know and, well i mean ask uh, yourself this marshall i mean how many males have a high sex drive at 61 years of age? a lot of males look at hugh hefner man he's well, tearing those I girls mean, up i don't even know if yeah. hugh hefner's really tearing those girls up now, or it's all stage managed uh, right now the reality of rosie is rosie in my opinion is, is attracted <laughs> more to women you know, now, now, now look if i was if i was a transgender female and i still had my plumbing and i was more attracted to women than men and you know, I was in an open relationship, polyamorous relationship that she's open with uh, her partner. I would want my plumbing to work, and I would want it to work good, just like I want it to work now. Whether it's Viagra, whether it's testosterone, whatever it is, there's nothing like the feeling of blood rushing down your veins and pumping in your heart and making you feel young again. And one thing I want to say. Well, let this, me tell you this, Marshall. Sladanophil <laughs> made me feel like the 25-year-old bull that I used to be. You know what I'm saying? Got the blood flowing. Oh, man. Well, so, bottom line is... Uh, my, I don't, I'm just telling you, my plumbing works fine. Okay? And, 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 and what I'm saying is exactly, I don't and, have any issue, but look. Right. I'm just saying that's all fine, well, and good, but you exhibit a lot of the characteristics of the 20 to 30-year-old in the th 20s and 30s and i i understand that you know what i mean but i guarantee you as you grow older other things will become more important to you you never know you might take up a, a hobby uh you might find a career or a job that's fulfilling you just don't ever know what it's going to be that could uh could change direction but i well, guarantee you you won't feel the same way at 40 and 50 as you do it uh you won't feel the same well, way at that age when you uh when you get that think about it everybody has a but different anyway, drive everybody has a different drive well, think that about them. the people that we see in the clubs yeah okay when we go and we have our a beer in a club or something like that just to experience the life in there by far and last night was a real outside example we had the two guys that were 50 something those they, guys were a lot older than me and they yeah, still they had a drive so it's not but so guys we don't no, know but for the most part marshall no. the people that were in there those clubs were for Younger. the most part 18 to 35 years old i would say and any tails off uh tails but there's but there's a lot of men that have I've been into these clubs rosie hasn't been into most of these clubs here in prime time there's a lot of men in there that are that are older yeah, yes there fine. are yes there are a lot of younger guys who have a high sex drive but there's a lot of guys that i've seen in their 50s and their 60s that have been into these clubs and just well, because you're older you know. And you get yeah. prostate problems doesn't mean that you lose your you lose your sex drive. A no, man, a man can produce semen until they die. And I can produce and have a ch child with a woman at any age. That's a true medical fact. And as long as you take care of your prostate and your health, a man can, can function until the day they die. That's a truth. Be a heck of a dad, there, <laughs> Marshall. That Taking is a truth. Your son to this strip club now, when he comes of age. With you know? women who go through menopause, even Wicked Widow was saying, they lose their sex drive at 55. They've got to take DHT and all that kind of stuff. But it's all about the prostate. As long as the prostate is healthy and functioning, that is. Uh, uh, for a man. So really, age, yes, drive does go down. Does that mean drive is eradicated? Absolutely I don't know, not. but see, I, it's not it's, yeah. it's not my drive. You know, that's right. why I can spend three to four hours right. on a video. On a video. Because my intent when I go into a club, have one beer, 
exactly. see what's going on inside the club and then say, oh, it's time for me, adios, and I've, uh, I've seen enough. But I don't exactly. hold anything against a younger person that goes in there, and even an older, if it's your thing, yeah. it's fine. You're having a good time, you're paying the tariff, you're paying the beer, and you're, you're enjoying the show or whatever. Uh, to me, there's, you know, there's, I've talked there's to guys. A limit I, to how much I've, I've talked, and everything that I care I've talked to, to many guys that go to these clubs that are in their 50s, that are in their 60s, and they still have a drive. So, as long yeah, as you, that's it's fine. Yeah. I'm not uh, saying, uh, and it's not an age hey, thing. Hey, Spanky, it's, how you doing? It all has to do yeah, with getting you know, away from that topic, though, because right. I think I understand that. You know, I think I understand what you're saying. Right in some weirdly obtuse sort of way, but I, I kind of get it. But the point I'm making is why do I spend the time and why am I not more aware on the streets? Because, um, you know, what what do you do when I've been on the Champs de Lycée in Paris, which is where the Eiffel Tower is, and you have the Seine River coming through uh, Paris there, and you'll literally have dozens of artists with canvases set right. up and they'll be painting that same scene that's probably been painted probably a hundred thousand times since since the 1800s or late 1800s and why do they do that because they get a certain joy out of seeing what they seeing how far they can take the limits of their artistry can i make something that's different than a travel log on on Paris, can I capture in one painting the essence of what the Parisian right. experience is like? To me, the challenge is you take an enormous city like Tijuana, you take one small section of it. That people right. know Tijuana is a wild town, but you try to show not only that, but some other sides of uh, of Tijuana apart right. from the nightlife, and you get the uh, food scenes, and you get a little bit of the uh, the religious experience in there too um yeah how by the yeah that's a good question how is your acid reflux doing what is yeah i haven't heard well, you talk uh, about actually your... the the prilosec and tums are working pretty well and as long as i stay away from the hot and spicy foods you know it helps out and uh, thanks to Rosie's advice and even my friend, the Divine Healer, the doctor from Michigan. Thank God it's working pretty well. And uh, so that's that's working pretty well. Well, I'm not um, a doctor. I don't play one on TV. I didn't stay at a exactly. uh, Holiday Inn Express. But left side heart, right side digestion. Uh, like digestion uh, issues. Yep. Um, I don't know what that means, LaDonna. That's not a religious experience. I don't know. I mean, I didn't spend enough time digging into that uh, to that uh, part of the culture or whatever. But if you uh, want to hold this to read, this is better. If you want, you can use it all. Well, you my can't video. see it. You, you know? can't see it. Oh well. No, you, you can't see it. Oh, so. I can see it. No, it's fine. I just lean forward a little bit into the uh, okay. into the camera. Now, let me ask you this. How you doing, Mark Handler? If, and I know you'll go back to Tijuana again, right. what would your focus, what what would interest you on the next, if you, when you go back to Tijuana again, and I can tell you what mine would be, what would your, uh, what would you, what would you focus on? Uh, I, I, I think the interesting thing about going to Tijuana or Mexico in general is to talk to the local people and just get information, more information about the city that you're visiting or more information about Mexico. I mean, I'm curious, just like we are when we went deeper into Mexicali, we're, we're curious, how do people live in Mexico every day <laughs> outside of the border towns, outside of the uh, adult entertainment district? What are, uh, what is Mexican life really like? What is their healthcare system like? What is their economy like? How is it, how does it really, would you ever take a, like a, uh, would you ever lease a house for a month in, say, Los Algodones? Yes, definitely, in a, yes. In an, like in maybe three streets back? Yes, I want to learn more about Mexico as a whole. What is, what is life like really there? What, 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 how is their government? How is their system? How does their government work? How do you, how do people hey, really make a living there? What, what's the difference between them and us, you know? I want to really get to know the more of the inner workings 
of uh, Mexico. What is life like really there? Why do people want to come there to here? And you know what? There is rich people in Mexico. Not everybody is poor. There's people that are successful. One of the richest people in the world is from Mexico, right? That yeah. owns a cell phone. It's Slim, uh, Carlos Slim. So, Carlos Slim. So, yeah. what I'm saying is the paint, the media that tries to paint, um, uh, that tries to portray Mexico to Americans as a poor, dangerous country, and it's not true. It's not true. So, I wanted just to get to know more. And when you talk to these local people, you always get nuggets of information. And you know, like you say, we learn something new every day. Well, I think it's and, I think it's fascinating too because Mexico is an economy like China, where I spent a lot of time, where there is no social safety net there. Right. So uh, sometimes. You can understand, like, the, we don't have people crossing borders in the United States to right. build a better life. Why? Because at the end of the day, there is a social support net to basically help everybody, no matter how dire the situation and no matter how poverty stricken. You'll probably always have something to eat, unless you're, uh, you know, strung out on the street or something, you know, or you have I'll, severe. I'll, I'll, let me finish. Yeah severe mental issues or uh, something alcoholism or something like when you can't physically take care of yourself anymore in mexico there's no such thing and i think that lure of earning 12 to 15 dollars working in a field in arizona and that translates to uh, you know that 12 to 15 dollars translates to a middle income in mexico making that middle to uh maybe upper income in mexico you can understand like the attraction of why people risk going over the border and things do i think that countries have the right to protect and defend their borders of course i do or else you'd have an out of control like we have in europe now where there was unlimited uh, migration of people from the uh you know from a lot of the Middle Eastern countries talk to Nicole about the way that uh, the UK has been torn up by uh, by immigration and things. So I can understand that. That's the that's really, Marsha, when you want to talk about real hard scrabble capitalism, that's capitalism like 1910 in America. That same thing where you have child labor and kids working in uh, on the streets and things like that. So. Well, that to me is the difference. That's I'll, why people put it in gear and those I'll, with get up and go, get up and go. You know. Now they, I'll tell you something need. here to counter what you're saying that, that will be a counter to what you're saying. I talked to a woman, a pretty young woman in Las Algodonas who's an optometrist. Okay. Good night, sugar cane. She was born in, she was born in Arizona. She's American. But not only is she working in Las Algodonas, she's living in Las Algodonas. And I asked her why. Why would an American citizen who's a licensed optometrist, right, not working and living in the United States? And you know what she told me? No. Nope. She said that the taxes are so high in the United States, the cost of living is so high in the United States, it's not even worth living there. And this is an American person who's a licensed optometrist living and working in Las Algodonas, Mexico. Now, Rosie likes to talk to street people, but she doesn't talk to people that are not on the street. And I do. I talk to people that are not on the street. I talk to people that work in these businesses. I've held conversations with a lot of women and guys that work in these different dental offices. That's something that she doesn't do, but I do that. And I've learned a lot about Mexico. I've, I've talked to Americans. I've talked to an American guy that's living there. So, this whole notion that everybody wants to leave Mexico no, and I come never to said the United that to anybody. Yeah, that comes How about to the, the people that don't have the opportunity for higher education, whose families don't have money to put them through beyond eighth grade. Well, exactly. In Mexico. Well, well, we're talking. What do you do? Exactly. You have an undereducated person. Um, and but, what kind of job opportunities are they going to have? Uh, well, they're better my, than they used to. I'll my, tell you one my, thing. They're better than they my used actual, to. My actual. My actual. My actual endodontist actually is a dual citizen. He is married to an American woman. He lives in Yuma, but his business is BW, in. How you doing? His business is in Las Algodones. Hey, world. Okay. Now, see. if he wanted to, he hey, could open Tim. up. He could open up a practice in the United States. Now, I'd like to ask him before I leave Mexico. I'd like to ask him. 
why do you choose to open a business, a dental business in Mexico and not in the United States? I'd like to ask him that question. Well, for one thing, he went to a Mexican dental school. And it's not wrecking you down. No, to actually, the, actually, a lot of those dentists and all the lot, donors. This guy that you're dealing with went to a Mexican, Mexican dental, dental school. College, okay. And I'm not saying anything negative about it because I'm sure Mexican training is uh, based on what I've seen on Los Algodones and the professionalism that they exhibit in their, their offices. I can't speak long term, but I can tell you that... Uh, Many of them would jump at the chance to practice in the United States. A lot of them could. are practicing in the United States. I can look, I can, there's a lot of dentists that are in Algodonas that are U.S. trained. A lot well, of clinics. Well, the other thing too, when I was living overseas as an expat, you get a, you know, at that time in the 1990s, you could earn up to nine, the first $96,000 that you earned overseas was not taxed uh, at the United States, okay? Anything beyond that was, and then you just paid your local, uh, you still had to file taxes, but you have had an exclusion as an expat living overseas. And uh, I think some people take advantage of that to live overseas too, that they uh, they can escape that income tax. And, and I don't know, I don't even know, Mexico must have some income tax, I have no idea, it must be a super uh, low, uh, must be a super low tax uh, over there, uh, stick Hello? to the street, Chaco, Stan, who's this, uh, let's speak well, words to win, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, what's going on, hold yeah. on a second, okay, hold on, yeah, He's on the phone, so. Anyway, uh, let's see. Is Twin Brother here for the free coffee? Anyone? I'd love a cup of coffee. Yeah, what's up? It's nice to see you in here, uh, Joseph Kane. Nice to see you. <laughs> it's one of the, uh, I think it's one of the issues of hanging out with somebody that's younger. Uh, and just has a different set of interests and things. Uh, but I have to say, um. I don't want to say Marshall was probably a culture snob before, but his whole world revolved around Chicago. And it's a big world out there. I got Joseph Kane, who lives in Western Australia in the beautiful uh, suburbs of Perth over there. And his view of the world would be dramatically different than Marshall's uh, view of the world. But I can tell that slowly his eyes are being opened to different cultures and um, different uh, different experiences. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, moment of silence. Uh, yeah, see, I, there's a lot I don't know. And let's see, Cheryl says Mexico's individual income tax rates range from 1.92 to 35 percent. Uh, those in Mexico on a work visa pay 15 to 30 percent. Corporate tax is a flat 30 percent. Yeah, I wonder when the income kicks in at what level uh, it does. So it's interesting. Um, yeah, perhaps much. It's mostly uh, truism. Well, the thing I would think, it's such a cash and carry economy that, um, you know, I don't know how much taxes are really uh, being declared and things. I don't think I was that amount. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Herb Albert. Do, 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 do. Yeah. How you doing, Red Pill? Um, I'm trying to scroll down. The chat's moving so fast here. Uh, lots of people have sleep streams and make money off. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> I know it's unbelievable. Who mentioned Herb Albert? SRO. <clears throat> I don't know where the tax... I'm not sure where the tax starts on that. But it's just the difference between, I think, our ages and... Uh, <clears throat> I see that same phenomenon uh, with a lot of guys his age group in the 20s and 30s. I see him lined up like bulls, like horses, at, <clears throat> like horses at the starting gate in Pimlico Racetrack in Baltimore. And that gate opens, and you watch them in the border, and they're practically tearing down that uh, tearing down that turnstile to get into Mexico and you they're all hopping in caps he's take take me down to where take me down to where the uh, hookers are and all that and the cabbies all know 
And it's, you can see their eyes when they get out of the uh, taxi and they stand in front of the Chicago club and they're like, wow, you know, the world is my oyster. But but to me, where the fuck is the challenge of that? You know what I mean? It's like, uh, you're, you're number one, you're not proving, uh, you're not proving your manhood by, uh, by hooking up like that. And that's my big thing about that. The, the challenge to me, it's like, if you could go fishing and you just hook the fish every time you dropped your line in the water, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be much of a sport. But when you got to go out there and and meet a girl on your own hook and in your own uh, with your own talent base or whatever, it's a totally different story. And that becomes to me that's so much more satisfying uh, than that. But. What do you tell these guys? They're lined up at the gate at the border. They're ready to roll in there, and they're like bulls. They're like this. Well, hey, there. hey, look. Let's look at. Let's look at. You talk about the American way of meeting women. Let's look at the American way of meeting women. You go to a club. You have the group of girls. They're in their group. They're usually two to four girls. It's never a girl by herself. It's usually two to four girls. And you're interested in one of them. You're going to have to have a conversation with the whole group. Yeah, well, you're already you're already up a uphill battle. And stuff. That's courtesy. It's already an uphill battle. You can waste your money buying drinks. You might not get their Facebook. You might not get their. Uh, you might not get their uh, phone number. Uh, you might. Um, Why what? Your uh, um, hey um, Debbie Lynn, how you doing? Honey? One thing that's given if you're at a dance club, they'll dance with you. Uh, they'll talk to you, and then. And then basically, at the end of the day, there's no surefire thing. Most of the time, the guys end up going home, let's just say, with their right hand and dry. Now think about that. You do that over and over and over and over again. And then men are starting to realize, you know what? This routine is getting kind of old. I think it's about time that we go over to the border. And when you went to Tijuana and you walk into a club on the weekend you'll see a lot of guys there and you know what they're tired of american women they're tired of all the chasing and it's part of the MGTOW movement the men going their own way and uh you know what maybe i i think i'm gonna probably interview some of these guys yeah, i'd like to interview some of these guys interview some of these guys and i, I want because i want all the women in america to know <laughs> that um no offense, but we're just tired of the BS. Well, and it's not only me going there. It's a, a lot of guys, hundreds here's, of guys, thousands of guys go to Tijuana. Here's other countries my take. Going on. It's a big movement. Here's my take: yeah. some percentage of men <clears throat> cannot adapt to cannot adapt themselves to the new realities of the world, where women have more power than they used to be. And they don't need to fall down for a buck. They don't need to do that. What does that mean, Marshall? <clears throat> it means that a man has to lift his game. He has to have, uh, he needs to sharpen his wits, sharpen the way he goes in, and come in with an element of, come in with a high element of respect to women instead of default dropping down to, you know, sexual conquest and things like that. Now, I'm not. I'm not downing what you're saying. I'm saying that's well, your take. And every the beauty of America is we can all have different opinions. And that's fine, you know. But I want to tell you at the end of the day, I don't think we'll ever see eye to eye on it. But let's, that's fine. Let, I'm, let's, I'm, I'm, let's, I'm a different uh, generation than you are. Let's, let's but look I at have the, seen the evolution of change. I have seen the empowerment <clears throat> of women that's come over the last uh, last. 15 Oops. years in particular and there's there's some men that just simply can't come they can't cope with that reality of the um, you know of the strength of women uh, so I'm going to leave it at that on that discussion I think it's just it's just different you know it's just the way I feel about it like right like, now uh, for I example like, uh, I feel like men have to evolve to and they have to have that recognition as I told you before, there's more women in professional schools in the United States, law right. schools and medical schools, dental schools than men now. And the whole dynamic of the financial uh, 
you know the finances of gender it's all really about changing. it's all about in america meeting a woman a marriage is a legal contract that's all it is is a legal contract and marriage in america and the western world has all boiled down to money it, marriage is a legal financial contract. Yeah, we're going to get a new subject in a minute, so put put the last word in. Yeah, on, that you're on. signing upon, and and the bottom line is is that um, uh, when we talk about forget about dating in America, the ultimate marrying marriage in America, it's all about money, and everything in America, not just marriage. We could just talk about anything. Everything in America. The cost of living here has become astronomical. That's why people are going to Mexico to get dental work done. Thank you, Sean. America has become a land of, there is no more middle class in America. Either you're rich or you're living day to day. There's no such thing as a middle class. The ultra rich are really, really, really rich. They're so beyond reality that um, I I've been to Palm Beach. I've been, drove by Donald Trump's house. I've seen I these. You, I've seen Wyatt. these. I've seen these mansions. We'll be on the beach, Johnny. You know, Woo. and I don't believe there's a middle class in America anymore. You have well, the ultra rich. It's been compressed. It's been sure. compressed yes. and stuff, and and uh, you know, because it's man, not just, let's face it, manufacturing-based economies produce. You have to produce right. something to have a middle class. America really right is not the industrial and manufacturing powerhouse it's a service-based economy that we use and to a be. little yeah. a little service goes a long long way you don't need the big numbers of uh you need a lot of low-end people that's why we see so many shops that for hire we need people <clears throat> but there's not a lot of managers and stuff so yeah things are <clears throat> things have definitely changed now let's change gears here yeah. marshall okay because I know you'll say more about this on your own right. uh, on your own platform about that. Have you started to? How have you felt about Mexican food? Are you starting to feel there's a certain like the Mexican diet is not many variations? Well, I on? believe I've watched a lot of videos of Rick Bayless. He's a famous chef from Chicago, and he traveled all over Mexico. I urge every I urge Rosie and everybody else to Thank look you, up. Spanky. To look up Rick Bayless. Rick Bayless has been in every region of Mexico, and he's uh, profiled all the different regions in Mexico and their kinds of food. The food that we're eating is just the basic street food. It doesn't really represent all of Mexico. There's all different kinds of foods in Mexico, all different kinds of types specific to the region. And what we're testing out is just cheap street food, basically. But it, that's all the same. But when you get into the uh, Good night, William. When you start traveling into Mexico, it's just like any other regions, like the United States. They're known for their certain foods, like mole. Mole is one of the foods. Uh, uh, um, like I said, and you just have to get more, more into it and travel in different regions to be more aware well, of their different foods. I don't foods. know. I've, I've, as I, as I say, after weeks now being in right. different Mexican towns, my take is that it's a very keto base diet there's a little bit of carbs a lot of meat in the diet but i don't right. see i don't see a lot of fruits and vegetables within the uh within the dietary structure now as he says i've been existing mainly on street food in that and right. i've loved it and i've loved it i may actually treat myself to like if i can find like a first class probably won't find it in los algodones may find it in tijuana like a really first class dining experience in uh I think that Rosie, I would be curious yeah to see how they can make that food experience different uh, now you said at the water you have seafood starts to enter into right like Nayarit I can't um, even imagine what right Mexico you have ceviche and things like yeah. that I so. think if, if Rosie were to watch some videos of Rick Bayless and he's traveled all over Mexico then she can educate herself more on the different Mexican yeah, foods I agree, and the different regions and and not say that Mexican foods food is based upon a steak taco it's it's not true well mexican a taco food. is the basis the, the no. tortilla is the basis of the mexican uh, that's just fast food, food. It's, it's, no uh, i think it's in uh, it's everywhere okay? right 
just just my opinion yeah i like i like all seafood everything from oysters on the half shell right oh. on up but i'd be very interested in seeing if we do this down to the um, baja peninsula which i kind of hope that we're able to pull off and maybe get right. somebody like spirit nomad to join us i mean border nomad maybe a, a couple other people yeah. to have our own travel crew that would really be good. Then I'd really be curious to see what else, uh, what else the food scene is uh, is right. like down there. Do you guys have any questions? Somebody said, "Are you going back to the rancho?" Well, the clock is ticking here. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the procedures that Matt, uh, Marshall had done today. He can talk about that on his own channel. But I will say it was two and a half hours. Uh, which gave me time to do my video uh, today. Right. And his face was swollen up like a, a mofo <laughs> when he, it looked like I told him, send a picture to Miss, to Mr. Rex. And I'll tell him he got in a street fight down in Mexico because he looked like you got, uh, you looked like you got clobbered, yep. clobbered down there when you came out of there. So, yep. Exactly. Yep. Um, yeah. So somebody asked if I'm going back to the rancho. It just depends on the time. Remember, I got to get Missy Jen to UCSF, University of California, San Francisco campus in San Francisco. Uh, coming into October, the beginning of October, Missy Jen will be my top priority at that uh, at that particular right. time. And then um, uh, to have uh, my final fling will be Las Vegas. And at that point, I'll be packing it in for the next two and a half months. There won't be, I'll be on the rancho. Uh, when Marshall comes to the rancho for the van build, it, you know, I might ask him to come down to uh, to Boondock and Point Ray Station or someplace along the Pacific Ocean there to, to see that experience or one of the small towns like Petaluma or a place like that and see what uh, see what California's life is like in, in NorCal. Um, Missy Jen, uh, yeah, Missy Jen is a sweet potato. Yes, she is, and I talked to her uh, today, and uh, she's very happy up there on the uh, rancho. Uh, so she's actually happy. Ask Elvis um, if he plans. Yeah, uh, you have any plans for Chicago? Or are you staying in the warm weather? I mean, well, I, uh, I, I, uh, uh, if I, if we get the, thank you, Gorby. If we get the van build done before the winter hits in Chicago, you know, January and February and March are three very dangerous months to be in Chicago as far as the winter time. But if we were to get the van build done, I think done I'd put December in there too. Myself, early, you know. Uh, well, December can go any way. Yeah. Uh, my main issue of going to Chicago is to see how my mom is doing uh, and you know it's difficult to be at her on the road but uh, if I can make it before the sometimes really bad can, winter hits sometimes you can find a $99 super saver flight to uh, yeah Chicago if, if I could stay like with that. one of my sisters or you'll family burn, you'll burn a lot of gasoline and, yeah and 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 fly over there yeah, for a time cooler. being that would be a that would be a thing and my main thing is just to, to see how my mom is doing and sometimes you can find a good deal on a flight yeah that would be not a bad idea <laughs> to do that um so well, one thing I think those teeth had to those yeah. teeth had to be done space ace and I have to tell you that the the cost savings we've talked to people and heard people that have saved two thirds on their uh, their dental work and stuff. Let me just finish yeah. this. And I have to say, I think he made a good choice to uh, get some of these teeth saved that could be saved. I was a little shaky about the dental situation because, to be honest, when I was down with Missy Jen, and I was in Los Algodones before Marshall was a year over a year ago. But we did not, we understood it was a medical town with dental and things, but we didn't even scratch the surface of what the reality is down there. Right. And once you get into the offices and you see the procedure and you see the professionalism in these, and you've got to be, because competition, the competition level is fierce oh, down there. Yeah, yeah. You have literally dozens of dentists that will do implants, and you have dozens of dentists that can... Uh, you know, maybe a dozen that do endontics and and uh, veneers. You got to be good. 
or Yelp, or things like Yelp. Or There's reviews hundreds will kill of you. dentists down there. There's yeah. over 600 dentists yeah. in Algodona. They will kill you. But uh, one thing I wanted to touch on, Rosie, is you mentioned Baja Foods, and I looked up this website. It's very interesting. Did you know that the Caesar salad was invented in Mexico? Did no, you know that? No, I didn't know that. Yes, no. there is, and it's really good. They make the dressing. You know, there's a whole thing on that where the guy makes a dressing for you oh, right yeah, there. Oh, yeah, right at the table, yeah. And what else did they Okay, have? so it was it was originated in um, in uh, in uh, Baja, so it's Caesar's Restaurant. Oh, you know what? Caesar's Restaurant on Revolution in Tijuana. That's where we should have went. That's where I believe that uh, the... <laughs> Caesar, Caesar salad. salad. Uh, uh, How do yeah. you like that, McFly? Uh, That's one of the plate. Uh, um, uh, it was birthed in Caesar's restaurant in Tijuana, and, and now I remember. I saw. I wish we would have went there because I saw it on TV where they were making the Caesar salad. So I wish we would have went to Caesar's restaurant. We were right there. So if we ever get back to Tijuana, that's the first place I'm going to go to. Caesar's restaurant. They actually made. The Caesar dressing there. That would be really cool to go over there. I, I love Caesar salad. Oh, it was actually uh, from Rome, Caesar like salad. No, it originated. Pop are you being funny? It originated at Caesar's restaurant in Tijuana. That's wow. interesting. Okay, yes. Okay, the number two, Port, hey, Coach. Puerto Nuevo Lobster. Um, and this is around the waters. Let's see. It, uh, it's uh, That's what they're known for. And that is in, oh, that's also in Tijuana. I regret I didn't have Mexican barbecue. Okay. Yeah, um, like uh, pork ribs or something like that. I'm tecate. hoping tomorrow to find a place that has um, um, barbecued ribs. I'd like to try that, see that. The other famous food in the Baja Peninsula of Mexico is tecate bread. I've never heard of tecate bread. I guess... Uh, that's uh, and that is in made in Tecate, Mexico. Uh, it's that's some also sort of... where the beer is uh, exactly. Uh, I'd let's like see to what see else. A, I'd like to see a Mexican brewery. That'd be pretty uh, cool. The number four food is <laughs> abalone chorizo. You said lobsters, the cockroaches of the sea. <laughs> abalone chorizo is made due to lack of refrigeration. I think it's the dried sausage. Uh, that is uh, something about uh, yeah. Okay, let's see. No, Fish. I didn't make it to the bakery today. I'm going to definitely make it tomorrow. I'm not going to eat anything tomorrow for breakfast, and I'm going to go over hungry. Once he hits the chair, I'm out on the street. I'm going to walk down to that friggin' bakery, and I'm going to buy something down there. Uh, I want to do that. Um, no chorizo. Uh, I've never, that's one thing I don't enjoy, Portuguese chorizo. I've never been into that too much. I just don't like the spice compliment of it. <clears throat> I'd like to, I wouldn't mind trying an iguana barbecue. That'd be cool. Yeah, just, I, I could never warm to chorizo. It was just one of those things that just didn't move my needle too much. The boss made a big chorizo and egg breakfast one. I, yeah, I ate it, but I just didn't uh, didn't like it. Uh, mole is something that you haven't really got into. Mole is a very famous mole sauce. I don't know who you're talking about, Ghost of Gigi. You have to put a name on it, dope. Let's see, veggie diet is less spicy. Good luck on that. I didn't see a lot of fruits and vegetables around. Uh, oh, Skipper, you feel better saying that? Like a six-year-old on here. Um, let's see, it's getting too much cinnamon for me. I love cinnamon. No, I didn't see any grasshoppers or anything out there at all. No. Nope. No, there wasn't really any exotic, uh, there wasn't really any exotic food that I saw. If they put it on a food card, I would try it. Like if I went back to, uh, Tijuana, I would definitely try the intestines on the taco to see how that tastes, to see what that tastes like. Um, hey, MB, how you doing, honey? <clears throat> okay, take care, AK. Nice to see you. Dollar, I'm actually thinking of running over and grabbing a coffee real quick before they, uh, what time do you think they close over there, Marshall? Mm. The, uh, um, I'm not sure. It's about 10:10 10, 10 right now. So. Yeah, they're probably packed in for the night at McDonald's there. Um, that coffee smelling so good. 
So good. Can I trust you with the chat for a couple minutes, or are you going to open your preacher channel? <laughs> I'm not going to open my preacher channel. I don't. I don't really. I don't really. Uh, I don't really. No, uh, I don't need I, sweet I only, or anything like that. So I only acknowledge people that are positive. I'm not going to acknowledge trolls. Uh, I don't really care. Patricia, about that. Uh, will the dentist finish before you have to leave town? Uh, he knows I got to go, but I'm figuring by uh, Thursday things should be all wrapped up down here. And if it's longer than that, I'll have to part company and head up to the uh, up to the rancho there. So, uh, which I kind of like don't like to do because I like to you know you got to run the the uh, pass again, and then you have. Um, the darn grapevine too to get over and then you have the haul up the central valley i think it's like a two day two day drive otherwise you're about 900 miles which i've driven before so uh let's see yeah max the ones that were, were down there well i'd love a cup of coffee uh Let's see. Yeah, they'll, I'll be streaming plenty of, on my own at the Rancho, too, so don't worry. No, um, I would eat uh, tongue is okay. I need to go to work. Um, take him for you. Don't leave. <laughs> they don't want to leave you alone on that. <laughs> the Marshall gets well, into I think, Marshall gets into his I, rant I think, mode. Let I me tell I think, and let me tell each and every one of you out well, there. Well I think with, I'm so much better. One thing with Rosie you. is that first of all You wanna I, hear I don't, people are doing well, but you don't want them to <laughs> I don't I don't I don't no 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 it's not about that. Let me tell you something, Rosie. I there's one the thing classic, about Rosie. I, the classic. Uh, the I don't classic tell. Rant. I don't tell Rosie what to do. I only give her advice. Okay. I only give her my opinion. Oh, they did do a lot of and, work. Uh, and Dawn. she does what she wants to do. Now Rosie knows. I've told her certain things. He looked like he got sucker punched today when he came yeah. out of the dentist. I've told Rosie certain things about about what's off limits. And she knows what's off limits. And, and I just think that bottom line is, is that um, the consequences of playing with the trolls is you're going to get burned in the end. So they will get you burned. It's like playing with fire. And so... I'm not telling Rosie how to run her chat. This is not my channel. I don't really care who she has in here. I don't care who her moderators are. I don't care what you people have to say about me. I don't really I don't really care. Because the well, bottom line is the, the, the difference between me and a lot of other YouTubers and nomads, I don't sugarcoat anything. I don't kiss anybody's butt. I'm the way that I am. And either you accept me or you don't. Bottom line. And you know uh, and with, like I said, with Rosie, I give her my advice and, and she, you know, she hasn't faced the wrath of the trolls yet on my level. She's not on my level of facing well, the wrath put, of the I trolls. I don't put stuff out but, on your level, you know, but I've she never will, gone on and told anybody I'm so much better but, than you. And in, in reality though, <laughs> in reality though, that's a guaranteed start. That's a guaranteed more, fire starter yeah, right the, there. The more that she puts, I've got the looks. I've got the charisma. And until I've got until the jet black hair, yeah, the uncut girth, the forty-four inch chest, the whole shoot. Match see, there. she doesn't understand until she gets burned by the trolls. I'm talking about really burn. And what I'm talking about is when she gets trespassed from a property, like I have. When she gets patted down by police, when they search your vehicle. Marshall, I have when, my vehicle searched. Yeah. In other words... I've been patted down by yeah, the police. Yeah. In other words, she's... I've had... I've been swatted. Right. Okay. And, and so the, the I've thing had is, the cops called on me. Right. Okay. I've had the FBI... I've, places, I've had the FBI at my And door. I've had right. people come up to me and say, we just got a phone call about you being live. Right. right here. Okay. And, and uh, I, I mean, just... I've that, had Granger catalogs delivered to the house. I've had... Harry right. and David's fruit subscriptions, magazine right. subscriptions, okay? Right. I'm just saying, okay? But I try to kind of 
I do kind of sugarcoat I'll what comes out of my mouth. I'll because tell you, I don't I'll tell you like this it. much, though, is that, first of all, I'm Elvis Travels, okay? I'm not Lion Screw. I'm not D-Dubs. And when I come to the Rancho, people are going to show up at the Rancho, okay? And they're going to be right at your front door. They might even go inside your property because I'm Elvis Travels, okay? I'm a whole different... You're a whole different level YouTuber here. No, I and you gotta, I've never had a Craigslist ad. And, and you got to take it seriously <laughs> I because, think I probably did because with some Rosie has ones. never had someone put... Rosie has never not trolled on my level. She's never had somebody well, put a Marshall, note on her van. Hey, look at what you've she's, done. She's never had people that. follow okay. her on the highway for an hour. She's never had people film her in a city multiple times in one day. She's not trolled on my level. She's not stocked on my level. She's not washed on my level. Well, I and, wouldn't. I wouldn't wear that like a badge. Marshall, and and the bottom know? line is, is because she's not been trolled at my level, she doesn't take it seriously, and I take it very, very seriously. Marshall, because, let's say somebody comes to the rancho. Okay, are they going to physically assault me? We don't know. Are they going to physically assault me? You don't know what's going to happen. Ninety-nine point nine nine percent. I'm not going to be physically assaulted. Okay. You're making that assumption. Though. I'm not making that assumption. I'm I'm basing it on the realities of right. why would somebody on YouTube want to risk their freedom for an assault charge? Okay, over what they see on a YouTube channel. It's like if I went after a, a TV star or a movie star because I didn't like the script on the show. It's ridiculous. You'd have to have a mind like a John Hinckley that shot John Lennon to be, uh, you know, or whoever the hell Reagan. Who, you know, you'd, you'd have to be partially out of your mind to do that. Now, if somebody comes, are we equipped to deal with it? The answer is yes, in a major way. Right. Okay? You got to take things if seriously. You, you know, if you come this on the not, property right. and, you know, it's a life-threatening situation, I don't have to mention what's going to happen on the channel, okay? Right. I'm not going to place, I'm not going to put that out on, on there. The Rancho is not an undisclosed location, but so be right. it, okay? And so when, be it. And, and you know, and I, and I, and and Missy just, Jen and I right. are fully aware of the potentials and the risks but we also have faith in people right that people will take it so far and not beyond yeah. have people taken it beyond with me before of course that they have. of course they have but i understand it's my life it's my property it's what i work for it's my youtube channel and I make my own decisions in life accordingly. Uh, now I take things seriously. Now let when, me finish. Yeah. As, you know, I've earned the right at my age to do the things that I want to do. Now, somebody to, to dislike her can say, well, I've earned the right too. I've had to endure Rosie's BS for years or something like that. And I'm going to put it in gear. I can't control that, Marshall. I'm not going to have a 24-hour security guard on premises. Have we taken steps to secure the property? Of course we have. But I live, I live in the real world where the people that I know and even the people that will never post a comment on the side and watch things will probably, you know, not do the things that you fear over there number one this the property is secure oh. it's fenced but i've never made any bones about where we live and our address and everything like that so well, let me ask you a part simple. of this will be how you conduct yourself let me ask you a simple now, wait, question wait, wait part of what happens marshall will be how things go there on a daily basis okay let me and ask you I'm a simple. You just to be respectful. When I've been respectful. I've been positive. Let me That's ask you fine. a simple question. You have been. Simple question. You would agree that I am much more trolled than you, right? Yes. Okay. Number one. Num hey, Andrew. Number two. I don't want to get into the specific or per or particulars, but I'm just saying that 
there's a time where we got to take things seriously. And there's a time. Take care, Richard. There's I'm, a glad time, you're, I'm glad you're recovering well. Sorry, I there, had to put that out. I'm just saying, there's a eyes. time for YouTube and little troll comments on a side chat. And then when you got somebody that puts a note on your vehicle and says, I'm watching you. And I'm going to do something to you. Then it's not YouTube side chat anymore. Then it's not fun and games anymore. Now this is real life. This person is in your physical vicinity. They know where you are. They're watching you. Now. You don't know what they're going to do. You don't know who they are. They're not Nicole Green on the side chat. They're not your buddy buddy from the drama channel. They're somebody, they're a ghost. They're a lone wolf. And you don't know why they're watching you. You don't know who they are. And you don't know what they're going to do. And Rosie hasn't been to that level. But I have. And I know what it feels like to be stalked like... Uh, uh, a deer is stalked by a by a uh, by a lion, and until Rosie faces that and gets to that level, she'll never really understand where I'm coming from. I've been at that level. I know what it feels like to be stalked, to be watched, to be monitored by multiple people. And so, if people want to call me paranoid, you can call me paranoid. You can call me whatever you want, but. These people are not paparazzis. Paparazzis film people for fun. These people are downright stalkers. They're, what they're doing is against the law, stalking and harassing someone's location multiple times in a specific area. It's against the law. And I have stalkers all no. over the world. And so the reality is, and, and the reality is, know, until Rosie, and, and I hope fine. it never happens to Rosie. I don't think it will, but hit that kind of. But level it's happened to me because I don't put the stuff out there that that winds up oh. that degree of dislike. But anyway, it you know, Marshall, I have to. I ha, I've never lived my life in fear. I've never been lacking in courage or bravery to just do the right. things that I want to do. That's number one. People know that on YouTube. I'm pretty fearless. Stupid. Probably stupid. You'd say you're stupid, Rosie, because you're you'd walk into the valley of death and just have and just be right. mowed down. If it happens, it happens. Right. But the reality is, we still have to live life. I've committed to doing this thing to number one for my own. I'd love to see what I could make of the vehicle on zero, basically right. hardly any budget of all uh, of all to do that. Right. And. Uh, <laughs> I'd enjoy doing the challenges of a build like this and to uh, treat that as like a, a craft product to me to, to right. enjoy doing that. To me, that outweighs the risks of uh, things on the Rancho. And at the end of the day, Marshall, you're a trained 15 year security veteran. So I'm like, you'll use well, all of your superior training to protect the rancho and if there's things that you think that we need to do we will have an open ear to yeah uh, my my, to su that. my suggestion is you should have uh, a, a camera there you should have uh you know you should have some sort of a security system something because let, let, let's face it uh it's just for your own good um you know uh and when I see the rancho, what's up, smooth? When I see you at the rancho, we know that Rosie and Jen are armed. We know that they know how to use a weapon. So if somebody thought about walking into the into their home, then you're nuts. But walking into your backyard, now that's a whole other thing. And I think that let's put it this way: Are Rosie and Missy Jen sitting ducks at the rancho? No, because if somebody goes into the rancho, they'll probably get their heads blown off. But when we talk about your backyard, I see that as really accessible to the public very easily. I think, you know, God forbid, somebody could come there. Did we not say the and, same thing at Mr. X's location? In exactly, Chicago. yeah. And so, ultimately, we had maybe one or two people came by in a van and just kind of just, just exactly. kind of took a look and spied on the situation. Right now, I'm aware of my trolls that are in the <laughs> Chicago land area. I'm aware of the trolls. I'm not going to mention their names or give them 
<laughs> give them any Shiver. advertising. But I don't believe that I that I have trolls in Chicago that would come to the level of you know doing something to the next level. But California is a whole different ball game. There you go, Tim. I'm not aware of a lot of people watching in California. I'm, I'm not. It's not my region. I'm not aware of that area or what's going on. But I'm just saying that that Rosie needs to have some sort of a. You know, when I see Rosie's backyard, it's very open to the public. There's not really a, a, there's not really much of a fence. There's not any signs. There's you know, uh, it's it's vulnerable. You know, uh, and you know, I just think that you know, I'm not saying that Rosie needs to worry about anything or be paranoid. I, I'm just saying I that if Whiskey OG could take Marshall to tell you the truth, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> first, first of all, I'm all. First of all, I'm 280 pounds. I mean, what do you think, okay. Dave? If Dave, yeah, I don't think you know. Uh, you know, if you ever got a, if, if you ever get up a whole full head of steam and and uh, blew you know, a gasket, I wouldn't want to be standing in the way of uh, you know this it, guy goes. You know, you know this guy goes off. I mean, it's you like, know if you get me ticked ticked off, yeah, I'm just and saying, you got a 280 pound man charging at you. Okay, if you don't have any brass knuckles, you're not going to take me down. I'm going to come at you, and I'm going to come at you hard. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be a. Now, Bill, do I Bill ever Goldberg want to spirit. see that happen? No. And do I think somebody like Whiskey, or Sean the Brit, or J.K. Nocal, my local guys around the area, would ever lift a, a, a fist in rage to somebody? The answer would be no. These are these are educated people. They put their hands on the shoulder and say, Marshall, I hope we can have a long talk. <laughs> and that's the way it would I'm go. I'm not afraid. But let's have a beer first. You I'm, know? I'm not afraid of the trolls doing something to me. I'm afraid this of, is that F of vandalism to the Lisa Marie. That's what I'm... Your van but, will be behind a locked fence. Right. Okay. And now, if, if somebody chooses to jump a fence, it's like this, this F-18 might break the sound barrier. And then on the other side, yeah. you got the, the, you know, you got the big, big gunite contracting guy who's got right. all of his heavy equipment and trucks and stuff like that. Yeah. This, this guy, you talk about an arms collection. This guy, it's got everything except hand grenades. I just think that Rosie's yard, it's not. There's not really a. There's <laughs> well, look not. Look at Mr. Really. X's and compare Mr. X's to to mine. Right. Could somebody have come up in the night when you're at Mr. X's property and we're doing the van build? Could they have come up in the middle of the night, committed some vandalism oh, yeah, while definitely. you're sleeping if you got your AC on or something like that? Yeah. Now, which property is better protected? Mine behind a six foot gate uh, right. all the way around? The, you know, so I got to be realistic about stuff. I got, I think I know the mind of people on, uh, on YouTube a little better. And I think for the sake of, you know, that Missy Jen lives there too. And I don't think that, that people would take it to that particular level. Okay. Well, in my position, look at when Dave went to Florida and he found my van and he docks my now, nephew's Toad. apartment complex. He docks a location to my van. It could have been anybody watching. And I've had people, American yeah, Super Tramp, right, came to Arkansas and videotaped my van. Everybody on YouTube wants to make a name for themselves. And uh, and <laughs> I, go, I, I, I take, um, 
you know, I take uh, the trolls seriously because you never know who's watching. Well, once, you know, once the van is gutted, he really can't be in the van anymore because once it's fully gutted, it's going to have to... Right. You know, it's not a position that you can live in the uh, van. So We'll have to take everything. We'll have to really clear it out. out. You'll have the use of the uh, of the uh, uh, the in-law building there, the uh, granny unit out there, and, uh, and live life. Just keep it clean and keep it nice out there. And there won't I wouldn't be mind issues. getting a tent. I'll, I'd pitch a tent back there. But uh, I just think that, you know, that um, uh, I take uh, the trolls very seriously because they've done a lot of things. Yeah, that's it, shit slinger. That that try. To I'm worried about the neighborhood idiots that come jumping over as, a, as opposed to somebody. I've had people come by. Well, let me give you an video example. Video me, video my property, send me a link to a private video. You know, Slim let Travels did that. Uh, did that crap? Made a point of. Uh, you let know, me let me by. give you an example off of YouTube. Not even on YouTube. I had my van that I had before this. It got burned, and the insurance company brought it to my property. It was sitting there for weeks, and it had the in, it, the awning was intact, right? It was sitting in front of the property. All of a sudden, I came one day and looked, and I saw that the awning was was being. They were trying to take the awning off. It was being loosened, and. The rednecks of Arkansas figured out that those awnings are a thousand dollars on a camper van. I don't know if people realize this, but an awning on a camper van like mine, they run eight hundred to a thousand dollars now, and people are selling for two, three hundred dollars used. I don't so, know how he's. Gonna, so I what I'm saying happens, is, Marshall. There's people, I know it happened in Arkansas. I, I'm, yeah, yeah. There's people out there that are even off YouTube that. When they see a vehicle that's parked, and if nobody's paying attention to it, they can take the awning off. Red pill, that's funny as hell, because Narsay was already complaining that the, uh, shower, <laughs> that the shower was small. So, so anything, uh, you know, anything can happen at, at, at any time. You no, know, the fire, and, you know, there's that whole BS about how his uh, van Dodge went on fire. It was in a shop, and the guy had the fuel pump disconnected on it, and he started up the... What did he do, Marshall? He started the... Uh, the ignition. Uh, and and the ignited where spark. were you? You were at work, and you got the call. I was, no, burned. I was there. I was yeah. there on the premises, and he had the van jacked up on jack stands, and if that guy didn't have a forklift to get the van out of the shop, his whole, <laughs> whole shop, shop would have cool. burned. The whole property would have burned down. Holy and shit. that guy, you know what that guy's I record, shouldn't laugh, man. That's yeah, That was a serious thing that happened. Yeah, well, he was at, yeah. We, you, it would have caused an explosion. The fuel tank would have exploded. Exactly happened. It the guy had taken the fuel pump off and he had started the engine and uh, what, what happened exactly with the fire? Well, exactly what happened was he had the van jacked up on jack stands. Why, did he, why was it in his shop? because it just died out on me so he was replacing the fuel pump he had the fuel tank out on the ground he had the fuel pump hanging half inside of the gas tank and half outside then he went to turn the ignition and all of a sudden i saw a little flame right under the engine bay on the ground and that thing just exploded into a fireball the whole inside of the van got engulfed in flames within two seconds and if that guy Lucky didn't have a, was killed yeah, that if that night. guy didn't have a forklift, he had a forklift there because this guy stripped out cars and transmissions right. to take them to, for junk and scrap metal. If that guy didn't have a forklift there, that van would have exploded. The fuel tank, the fuel, that would have been an explosion, and the whole shop, the whole property would have burned down. Yeah, I'm gonna. He's gonna sign a waiver before he breaks the plane to the rancho up there. You know, I don't want to get sued up there. So. Um, so yeah, I, I think that, you know, uh, I take the trolls very seriously because the trolls have made it personal with me. They've made YouTube real. It's beyond words. And like I said... Well, like, look, you've been uh, keeping it positive. This, yeah, I mean, I'm I just have to say, I got to say, all through our whole tour through the Midwest, um... I think it's been remarkably positive, the, the content that you've been bringing. I cannot fault somebody for having opinions on YouTube, even though I may differ with them. 
they're exercising their American right to uh, the speech that they, the things that they believe. I cannot, with a good conscience, fight. I can disagree with it. Right. But has Marshall brought more content than I say ninety uh, percent of the people in our community uh, with our travels? Yeah, you might not like the lack of editing and stuff like that, but there is the effort to go out there and capture the food, the the life on the streets. So, uh, you know, let's give credit where it's due, okay? It's been a positive summer. It's continued right into the uh, fall now. And now that he has a taste of Mexico, I think he has well, his sights set on bigger fish now. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't talked about anybody. Yeah. All we've been doing is making content. It's a travel vlog. We're not bringing drama into it. We're not talking about people we're not gossiping it's just we're just traveling and making content yeah i don't even and, know which scam we've ever done virgil nothing we've done is together and, has ever involved money from anybody no. so i suggest you get your head out of your rump and uh rethink your line of thought there but that'll be possible because you got eyes out the back of your butt now let's see oh i don't care about it what do i care i uh you know, I turned on my thumbs up, thumbs down on January 3rd, 2013. And if you yep. think it moves my needle at all about that, it's just that when you have it's a uh, sign at a time. I can know? have, hey, look, I can have, I, mean, the, the uh, good, I can have the nice people thumbs me up and they uh, stop by the chat. And then uh, I've had videos know, where I have the people that are always going to dislike you. They're always, or, it doesn't yeah. make a difference. I've had videos where I've had six, 700 thumbs down, but. I've got a channel with 7,100 subscribers. Half of my audience are not subscribed, which is 50%. So I've got over 14,000 people watching actively. Do six or 700 people or even 1,000 people really make a difference out of almost 14,000, oh, 15,000 people watching? I'm fine, BW. I'm fine. Absolutely not. So, uh, Do you give Elvis money when he's on your hangout? Nope. 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 No, nope. 6120. What's 6120 now and dropping? What does that mean? You have 6,120 now. That's not true. Uh, I look at my subscribers right now. Let's take a look at them. You don't have any basis for that, Virgil. You just come out and blather that is not something true. that has I no have basis. 71. No, he said you and Elbow doing a scam right now. You support a scammer. In what way? This is 2019. As Berg says, Virgil, come up to present time. 7,100 subscribers. Let's see. 4,140,000 public views. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying I'm enjoying what I uh, what I do. I roll with uh, <coughs> I roll with things on the daily. The thumbs up and the. Uh, 71 down. When you do good content, yeah. you get a thumbs up. When Marshall's on the chat, you get a thumbs down. I mean, it's just the nature of the beast, okay? I mean, I'm just saying I try to always pull positive every single day. But has Marshall been positive this summer? Yes, he has. So, can I read this? I want to read this here. 50, it says, watch time for my subscribers in the last 28 days. 51% subscribe. 46.4% of the people that have watched me in the last 28 days are not subscribed. Do the math. Add 46.4%. What is a to fake What is a fake food? Well, what is a fake food review? What a ridiculous thing to say on YouTube a fake food review when every meal we've had this summer uh, all through all of our travels has been bought and paid for. What a ridiculous thing to say. Uh, let's see. Show us. I don't know if there's any hot chicks in Yuma tonight. Uh, I don't. Thank you, Pam. Uh, can I just say this one second? My, I can't believe Love that my, fe my female audience is 40.6%. My male audience is 594 That A couple of years ago, that was always 80% men. I don't even know women. a Burger King uh, thing. The impossible. What, a $2 burger or something like that? Uh, let's see. I don't know about uh, 
he, he said he got free food for reviews. Isn't that what Yelp is all? Didn't you say if you're doing Yelp reviews that people start to give you free food or something on? Well, there are saying? some, there are some, no, there are some restaurants. If you let them know, yeah, depending I've never, on I've the I've never owner, had a paid review, so I don't really know. No, there, there are some places. See, and Rosie doesn't. Well, what are they talking about, a fake food review? I don't know. I don't even know what they're talking about. But it's like a bur impossible burger. I, I er, if Rosie were, you know, the time that she spends, think about this now. And this is just this is just my opinion. Oh, it's a vegan burger. I'll have to try one. If, if Rosie spent some time writing Google food reviews or Yelp food reviews and, and had a, a serious Yelp In between Yelp page. editing my videos, right? My and four hour. Yeah, if she spent some time doing that, <laughs> when you go to certain restaurants, they look at that as a foodie resume. They'll give you free food. They'll give you samples. They'll let you videotape their establishment because they take the online review seriously. They take it very seriously, a lot of restaurants. Oh, yeah, that's right. I keep my things uh, there. And we're real. talking about famous, popular restaurants out there, you know, well-known restaurants. You and know? we've been offered free meals and things, and we turned it down when we're doing uh, reviews. Patricia says, Rosie, how do I take steps to be more active? Sorry to sound so naive. Tomorrow, Patricia Wakefield, here's what I want you to do. I want you tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow morning, preferably after morning coffee and some breakfast, Go outside to your downtown area and commit to walking about four, three or four square blocks of your town. And instead of just driving, go look at your town walking and notice how different, notice how many things that you see and observe when you're on foot <clears throat> as opposed to being on a car. Marshall had a good point today. We were walking down the streets of Algodonas and he was looking for a particular place to go. And it's up on the second floor of a building with some raunchy stairway going up to it. Whoever knew. Whoever and knew he's like, was. how many people look up at the second, you know, there's all, but there's a whole nother now, set I, of offices yeah, and businesses. I, up exactly. On the, I'll that's say this, how you start to get active. I, do that, do exactly. that every day and you'll start to get hooked on that. One okay? thing, one thing I'll say with Rosie <clears throat> is that. He didn't get teeth pulled today, grumpy old man. Okay. One thing I'll say that I agree with Rosie on is. When we were in, in Detroit doing the driving chooching, that was pretty cool uh, to do to survey the whole area. But yeah. when you're in Mexico, these towns in Mexico are so small. And if you drive through Mexico, you're going to, like through uh, small towns in Mexico, you're going to miss a lot of things. So walking in Mexico with Rosie is a joy because you see so many things that you would never see driving with a vehicle because their infrastructure is different than ours i'm not paying for the van rebuild jessica <coughs> i'm sorry mark <coughs> go ahead wouldn't you agree rosie that the way the mexican infrastructure is in other words we're so open here everything's in an open shopping center you can really see everything from driving but mexico imagine if we would have drove through <coughs> Algodonas, it's, it's built for foot for and bicycle. You, yeah. Exactly, you would miss so much by not walking it, you know. And I truly, lo uh, I truly enjoy love walking in Mexico. No HR forty two. You can't think of any example. You just promote the company line, like so many others, without a basis uh, of things. You're gonna walk through a Guatemalan convoy. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens down on the uh, down on the peninsula. I don't follow Coates. I have no idea what Coates says. I cut him out of my life months ago. I was nothing but ever nice to that guy, and uh, he's been nothing but an a-hole to me. So I'm, he, I cut him out of my life. No regrets. He's blocked and moved on. So I haven't watched a Coates video in I don't know two months guy's not in my life anymore yeah the horse and buggy days everything is built that's what i say jayco no i don't got time for nonsense of uh, uh 
people that would uh, curse in every video and stuff as if they're a big tough guy. I just cut them out. Doesn't matter to me. I don't need a belligerent uh, fool. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, when somebody behaves like that and they turn on you like that, I just, I block and, and I'm done with it. I move on just like people have unsubbed me. Other people come along. I just don't get all tied up with uh, that stuff. Um, yeah, I just, I can't watch it. I don't like to see people that uh, curse. If you have to curse his uh, uh, video. Well, can, I, can I say one thing real quick here, Rosie? Uh, Rosie's video. What is it? Rosie Elvis, uh, Rosie Elvis, please tell me you reported the video from Damn eBagger uh, is the YouTuber. Please. I've never seen anything on that. Rosie, uh, can I? Can I, want, I want to tell you something here. I don't follow that many channels. Uh, can you see. look? Look. I, I want to say this one thing, right? Rosie's video, a night in Tijuana, a cell phone cinematic experience. I pushed that on my channel. I said people should watch it. Everybody should give Rosie a thumbs up. Look at that. You have more. Look at the thumbs up. You've got double 106 to 48. I can't read it. You got 106 thumbs up and 48 well, thumbs down on the video. I think it's a nice. Video. Now, what I want to say is. I really enjoyed this video. I really love Tijuana. And I would please everybody watch it in here. We have 230 people watching. And that's a lot of people. And I want to say everybody needs to give Rosie a thumbs up right now on this video. A night in Tijuana, a cell phone cinematic experience. This is the best cinematic experience Rosie uh, video that Rosie ever made. And I think she deserves a lot of thumbs up and a lot of positive comments. And I wish everybody watching this video could please give her a thumbs up. I, I encourage her to go to Tijuana. She did, and she made this video, and I'm so glad that she made it. It's one of the coolest, coolest places I've ever been to, and I think Rosie deserves more thumbs up than this. More thumbs up it's than the fine, 106. It's fine, Marshall. It's just my over opinion. Over time. Yeah, over time. In, uh, in, yeah. Uh, over the years, thousands of people will watch that. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you, VW. But I, I just Thank want to show you, the survivor. power of the people. That's all. Yeah, I appreciate that, Storm Rebel. You know. Uh, I just, you know, there's not a lot of things that I, um, number one, I don't have time to keep up with all the things that, right. um, you know, everything that's going on on YouTube now. Like somebody wrote me, uh, somebody wrote me a message, man, I hope that you were watching Tucker's, <laughs> Tucker's chat <laughs> tonight. It really went off the, uh, really went off the rails. Did you see what? They, you know, did you see what uh, uh, Pirate said? I'm like, man, I'm in Mexico. I'm not, you know, <laughs> I can hardly get cell signal, you know. <laughs> I'm not sitting on a, I'm uh, not watching a, a uh, hangout on there. You know, I'm, it's like we come out of Mexico and stuff and it's dog tired. You just want to go to sleep because the next day, you know, you got to get up and get cleaned up and go over I've, to, uh, I've, to Mexico. It's not that I don't like the people, you know, it's just that there's only so many hours in a day. Right. And the time just gets so filled here. And I don't want people to be insulted. Like, Oh, Rosie, you didn't right. watch my, I'm a fearful. Some of my friends are, but I haven't seen you comment on my videos and stuff. Right. And I'm thinking, man, it's like uh, half the time I'm in Mexico and try getting, it's like maybe this street has it. Right. Oh, don't move too much. Move 10 well, feet to no the way. right. There, move you 10 know, feet to the, the day, right, Marshall. The, there's a good signal. The, when you're on the road, let me tell you people something. <laughs> when you're on the road and you're living the van life and you're making content yeah, what Rosie's well, you're, doing. Your double standard buster uh, gonad is uh, that you never forget. Oh, you never move on in life. You're living in the past, okay? Uh, You'll uh, never come up to present time, and that's the reality. It didn't wonder if, if uh, uh, Marshall became a saint, you would still feel the same way about him. So that's the bottom line. Uh, I'm not. Let's see. I think I really love this video Rosie made, like I said on T1. I wish you guys could really watch. Look, I mean, Marshall, really... stop talking about that video, right. okay? Let it be natural and let people watch it if they right. want to watch it. When would you ever not be in the Southwest? Uh, in June, July, August. I hope I'm never in the Southwest down here. Um, that's what I would hope, that I'd never be in the Southwest in the heat of, man, we endured 108, 110 degrees in, uh, right. in Yuma and dying on the streets of Los Algodones down there. We want more skyline. Yeah, I love it too. 
Thank you very much, McFly. I really appreciate that. means a lot to me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Canada. Yeah, I love Canada. I love Winky. How you doing, baby doll? What's going on? There's Miss... Uh, the beauty queen of Phoenix is in the chat. Winky Whispers. Winky there. Whispers. How you doing, Winky? Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Winky. Yeah, Winky's very nice. She... Uh, She's a beautiful gal. She sends me uh, her lovely uh, face pic and stuff. She's wonderful. I want to like Marsha when I'm about to. He shatters with his uh, crappy attitude. Like I say, I'm not. I'm not not invested in changing anybody anymore on YouTube. My goal is to travel and see the world. Whether I'm with D. Um, and I'm wishing D all the best down in Dallas, down there. Yeah, uh, what's the update on D, guys? I don't know what's going on. He's been working hard. He's been uh, goes in at four o'clock in the morning to start uh, start cooking and things like that. So it's been quite a lifestyle change for him. I hope he keeps it up. And he's looking for some temp labor too. I'm looking for. We'll meet up again. You know, we'll, we'll I'll see him again. How about line screw? <laughs> meeting well, line screw. I'm is looking be a forward. I'm element. looking forward to meeting line screw because line screw has traveled to Thank Cuba. Thank you, Grunge Rock. Uh, are we even? Is it? Is it? Is it legal for what happened? Just had to reconnect. Oh. Is it legal? Yes, you can go to. Um, I don't know. I if think it, you could for well, what, I'm what the not laws sure are if, on that. I'm not sure if uh, the State Department under Trump reimposed. Does anybody know if they reimposed restrictions on travel to uh, Cuba? I, I think that they <laughs> Thank did. you, Red Pill. I've heard that they have. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, we're watching Elvis before you, Rosie. That's fine, Seal. Uh, people were watching me before Elvis too. I was on a year before Elvis ever got on YouTube. So. Hey, if you're an Elvis Travel <laughs> subscriber, can you press 69? Where's all the Elvis Travel subs out there? No restrictions. We got oh, 200. Okay, Winky says no restrictions for Cuba that I know of. Would I love to go back to Canada? I'd go back to Canada in a heartbeat. My destination would be Montreal and. Quebec because I think that they're Montreal is a dynamic vibrant and it's Marshall is probably a little like New Orleans up there with that French influence of the cuisine right and the people and the more like you know not like the worker bees of Toronto and New York City but more like the joie de vivre the joy of life and the wine and the song and the, well and there's the a, like and there's that. also a very vibrant um um, uh, people from Montreal and Quebec City are, are they're serious about their Class B camper vans. There's a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, sure, Cat. You keep telling yourself with your weak trolling there. Yeah, and enjoy yourself. You know. uh, Rosie, I wanted to point out about Cuba. It says, what, a, um, what a poor sap. Who's that? Let's see, I don't know, some oh. faceless troll out there. Mm. Yeah, been to Montreal many times. It's a great city. Uh, let's see. Is that my wig on there? What's up, wig? Don't take America Amex Travelers checks. Wow, you were there uh, in '89. One, one thing I wanted <laughs> you to. You must be Canadian, Francis. One thing I, I loved to, Montreal. One thing I want to read about Cuba. You know what it says here? Hey, four scores. We're going to be meeting him in uh, four scores and seven beers. In uh, I thought he's from Pennsylvania. He is. He's going to be in Vegas that week, so he wants to oh. go choochin. Uh, but they're saying here about Cuba, says Americans traveling to Cuba in 2019 will need to obtain a Cuban tourist card, which is similar to a travel visa. Unfortunately, Americans cannot travel to Cuba for just tourism. All Americans traveling to Cuba have to fall within the 12 authorized travel categories per State Department. What does that mean? It means that unless you're gone for business or something like that, or developmental, or so we legally or, can't go for tourism. Doesn't though. sound like it, you know. No. Um, That's what. Because yeah. we're living here in Allentown. La da do. Uh, people would actually pay 40 bucks for one Cuban cigar. So, would you? They sell them on the streets of Tijuana, but I'm not sure if they're true Cuban cigars. You know, you got to be very careful of uh, 
I'd like to try a Cubano, but I'm not sure so if I'm getting the real it, deal. It says here, and it says here in 20, in June 2017, Trump announced a ban on individual people of people trips. In order to tra travel individuals to Cuba in 2019, you got to travel and meet the requirements. So yeah, they banned it. Trump banned well, that's it. it. Uh, yeah. That's it. Yep. There is no truth, Cat. You can't bring any truth. You just so I'm gonna put you out for the night. Bye. But it says uh, journalistic activity. See. Can we visit for journalistic activity? Uh, I'm not sure if YouTube That's uh, what it qualifies, qualifies that. for that. Come yeah. with facts, Cat. Don't use one of your other hundred troll accounts on there. Let's see. Casper says you can go to Cuba. Do you have to fly into another city and travel to Cuba from there? Wow. I don't know. You know, Canadians have been traveling to Cuba and wintering down there for uh, for decades. Allentown, yeah, good old uh, four scores and seven beers ago, cause we're living here in Allentown. Do do la do 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 do. What is the allure of Cuba? I guess it was uh, 1950s America stood still. You see all the old 1950s <coughs> cars rolling around, which they've kept forever. And uh, <coughs> just to see the city. And the, the Cuban people uh, are so friendly in, in Miami. I spent... I'm going to get a, a drink. Yeah. I spent uh, a couple of uh, a couple of months in Miami, Florida. And uh, I love the Cuban coffee, the Cafe Bustelo. They've got some pretty good food. And the Cuban people are very friendly. They're very friendly out of, you know, I would say they're, they're just as friendly as um, some of these Mexicans on the border towns. I really enjoy Cuban culture and food in, in Miami. I've had, a, I've had a Cubana. Or was you going to come to Vegas too? Well, I guess um, I I guess I will. You know, I he's I, got a choice to um, make. I think that you know, you know um, that um, um, I think that I'd be looking forward to meet Line Screw. I think I would want to check out uh, the Las Vegas Lounge. Uh, might check out a swinger club who knows i mean you know <laughs> but i think um uh see marshall with the green door yeah i might have my sladanophil ready i'm not sure if i'm not sure if uh okay i'll i'll, I'll tell you i'll go to vegas under one condition Lime i've got to have a gentleman He's a i've nice got to have at least thank you sandy i've got to have at least five thousand milligrams of sladanophil ready <laughs> To get ready to go, maybe uh, on some nights at the swinger club, and then I got to stock up my sladanophil here while I'm in Mexico. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I want to make sure that I'm, you know, I want to make sure that I'm uh, like Superman, Man of Steel. You yeah. know, they sell those underwear that have Superman. That's I what know. I. That's what I want to wear know. at the swinger club. It's like a Superman <laughs> underwear. It's blue, you know, with the Superman insignia. It says oh, Man of Steel, you know. Oh man! <laughs> and then have my Sladanophil on, on, on with me, you know, and I and, don't know. I just hope uh, I'm at a different swingers club when that. Uh... <laughs> and Rosie could walk in with her cowboy hat, and and then yeah, I think uh, that'd be nice, cowboy hat. And cowboy hat, and, all that, and she uh, can go yeah. topless, and and then you know, <clears throat> it's funny. But I'll be ready. Dogs quicker. Do a line. Yeah, they, how you doing, Jazza man? Nice to see you, my friend. What's going on? Nice to see you. Uh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, four scores is uh, four scores is a big. Uh, what do you? Four scores is a big slot machine uh, player. So he's he's staying down at the high end uh, place down there. I think he's going to be down on the strip somewhere. Uh, thank you very much, Katie. You're very sweet. Tanya Z, nice to see you. <clears throat> oh, there you go. Johnny Watt says he needs softeners. <laughs> That's funny. That Johnny funny. Watt, when I come to Rosarito, yeah, that Beach, would brother. be good. Four scores. Please look up. Please put in my search box uh, on Rosie Murphy and Rosie O'Kelly. Punch in cinematic Las Vegas and enjoy some of my cinematic streams with the uh, fountains there. 
How you doing, Brock? Is that Brooke or uh, uh, yeah, Brock? And Rosie, when I get when I get down to Rosarito Beach down there, I'm gonna tear the no walls kidding, down. Susie. With, tear the walls down with Johnny Wad down there in Rosarito, <laughs> brother. Woo, you better get ready because the oh, team's gonna be man. ready to tear the walls down, uh, brother. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Dirty. Yeah, uh, Mr. Dirty's a gentleman. Uh, Mr. Oh. Dirty might stream snipers, but uh, Mr. Dirty is a gentleman in every sense of the word. He'll He'll have his say in a calm and dispassionate way. So, well, the difference between Rosie and me is, is uh, somebody, somebody. Let me just say this: somebody who stream snipes me, that's a troll. First of all, anybody that comes on my phone, that has to have my permission. Nobody forces themselves onto my camera or forces a conversation with me. Period. And, you know, uh, nobody's going to come into my stream without my permission. Uh, that's that's, fine, that's, the, that, that's the way that I, that I roll. Anyway, he's uh, a, uh, <coughs> he was a no, very nice guy. I'm, I'm not Rosie uh, O'Kelly. I'm, I'm Elvis Travels. And nobody's going to come into my stream without my permission. Nobody's going to have a conversation with me without my permission. Yeah, and four uh, scores uh, on there. <clears throat> four score says I'm going to stream bomb you. He's a nice guy. Four score. Uh, I see. don't like to have even people in the public on my stream coming onto my camera. Rosie's seen me reject many people. I've told many people don't come into. I've I've told it Rosie this, and I'm serious about this. I don't want anyone coming within my space on my camera without my permission. Once they come into an arm links away and if they're coming into my camera they're coming into my space yeah i like four scores per personal space nice rosie's a very free willing person <laughs> she let people come into her space that could have physically assaulted her and i warned her about it and she doesn't take those kind of things seriously but i do i take i take things seriously so um Nobody. Uh, let's see. Now, four score says I'll ask permission. There we go. I told you he's a gentleman there. Yeah, so well, four scores. Yeah, I'm, What's I'm on not... the agenda to, for uh, tomorrow? Tomorrow, I want to try to get a. I want to try to get to the uh, bakery tomorrow. That's down there and review that bakery. You show the mechanic shop, the car wash. Yeah, the mechanic shop, the car wash, and catch some more of the uh, uh, non-traditional, what I call uh, out of the core area. Of right. Los Algodones, I'd like to try to find something different to eat tomorrow night. I'm going to challenge Los Algodones to put something different on the table tomorrow. Will they? Now, this is a town that closes their doors at 5 p.m. Okay, you literally can't get a meal after 5 p.m. Because uh, the town clears out. So the challenge will be sometime tomorrow afternoon to... Uh, I want something different tomorrow. You should try okay. the mole. You should try maybe mole. Yeah, I'm not but... much of a mole person. Right. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll try it, but I want something uh, uh, different. Um, yeah, I got a lot of food reviews coming. Katie Marshall has some food reviews. I think he put up uh, La Paella, 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 Paella tonight yep. on there. Yep. Yeah, Dawn, I don't want to eat any fruit down there because, uh, you know, it's human feces is used to fertilize uh down there so pinoche i'm gonna pinoche. look that up because you said that but i don't yeah. know if that's true or not you said that that's yep. that's hard to believe that they do that in mexico he's not running the show fruit loot let's be realistic on here if it's that bothersome for you you know i don't know what to tell you so oh thank you very much Bubba lee much appreciated um yeah there are a lot of places still do uh, yeah, no problem dancing, Don. Uh, you just got to be careful. Want to come with me on the helicopter? Man, four scores, I'm not getting into a helicopter, brother. I'm sorry. I've seen those pilots whiz around the uh, stratosphere and stuff. Some of those guys are like blown out pilots, man. I'm telling you. No, I'll, I'll do a video of you from the ground up there. Uh, 
Yeah, y'all are a chooching team like no other, that's for sure. A cartel uses people. I mean, it's pretty common in a lot of uh, countries still to use that. Oh, thank you, Sandy. <clears throat> awesome if you can find authentic. Uh, <clears throat> we did have authentic food in Mexicali. It was Chinese food. But we had already had Panda Express that morning, and n neither Marshall nor I felt like uh, eating a Chinese meal. Although the Chinese did have a hammer lock on dining on Sunday night in Mexicali, I can tell you that. So, uh, But that's very sweet of you, four scores. Those suckers crash. Uh, really, try some Mexican nachos. Yeah, I think I want something different tomorrow. Yeah, but I think it's, I think they're on regulated uh, fields and things, red pill. I think there are certain standards that the USDA imposes on uh, Mexicans. Uh, I didn't see any Italian down there. It's almost unknown in that area. <clears throat> no, no clubs from the vid. Uh, that's the thing in Mexico. It's Mexican food. It's not like the United States where you have... Chinese, Italian, Greek, French, German. You don't see that in uh, in Los Algodones or other places. Any Mexican buffets down there? Not in Los Algodones. I was so. no, there hasn't. But I was told by uh, a friend of mine who's a nomad. If you go to Mexico City, it's just like any other major city. You can get any kind of food you want, and he says the food is great. So. These cities that we're going to are border towns. Uh, they're tourist towns or local towns. You're not gonna. Uh, they're not the sort of a city that you're gonna expect to have. Uh, well, you know. Mexico City is the largest city in the world. You got 20 million people that live in Mexico City, and I think yeah. Shanghai rates number two at 16 million or something. So you're talking about an enormous, super right. enormous city, and they they actually say the street food in Mexico City is 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 the best of the best of the best and that's why Mexico. and that's why like i said i i i think rosie is just not there aware go, a lot of mexican food and she needs to watch rick bayless along with many many of you to get a little bit educated on mexican culture and food that's how i learned Shirley a lot about Rianio. mexico there you go tim tim am i going to see you in vegas again when i'm down there good night to ava 7 a.m in the uk yeah, I'm going to go ahead. It's been about a two-hour stream uh, tonight. I think that's enough for me tonight. I'm going to make sure I get a lot of uh, a lot of sleep for another day in uh, in Mexico tomorrow, and one step closer to Marshall uh, finishing up his uh, dental adventure here, and that'll be a good thing. I mean, to have finally got full control of your your dental issues while it's still not too late so you don't have to wear dentures or anything like that. That's lucky in life that uh, you see a lot of people in Boyd, they've had to have all of their teeth extracted. And stuff, well, and well here you go. You have an option in, in Algodones and you don't have to do it all at once. You can make multiple visits. You can... Uh, yeah, you know, take care, Tanya. Anybody who needs to get dental work, I highly recommend Las Algodones and You'll save a ton of money, and the dentists are just as good, if not even better, than the United States. And just because they're not, some of them are U.S. trained, like Rosie was saying, um, uh, my dentist wasn't uh, American trained. It makes no difference. The schools in Mexico are just as good as the ones here. What's the difference? Um, they I have think all the low Salgadonas. They have to hit a pretty high standard to survive in that area because competition is so great right and the internet is so strong and people spread the word about what's a good place to go and what's not and yeah have a wonderful night four scores it won't be long we will meet my friend got my first crown on a back tooth oh, i was shocked it was silver huh that's weird because usually he has an enamel coating like I lost the coating on mine and I took some Gorilla Glue and glued it back on and it lasted a couple weeks uh, there. So I want to thank you guys. You wanted to go to Pakistan. Yeah, thanks for a fun chat tonight. Yeah, four scores. So see you in Vegas, Marshall. Uh, All right.
So you take Marshall to the Winchester house in San Jose. That's a really weird house. Uh, built by the heir to the Winchester fortune. Patricia, try something different, honey. Break the mold tomorrow. Do something you haven't done in a long time. You're fine, Dorothy. You're fine, honey. This is a free expression uh, uh, platform in here. I get going two weeks to get an implant done. It's nice to see Seal Seal Hater in here tonight. I haven't seen you in a while. Yosemite, good to see you, honey. And uh, Amy and everybody else. So y'all take care. Let me know how it turns out, Patricia Wakefield. You know I love you, honey. You saved my bacon in the heat of... Uh, of Yuma down here and those hot 100 degree, 108 degrees, 88 degree, 90 degree nights. Your fan made it awesome. Dancing Dawn, I love you, honey. You take care. I hope to see you in Las Vegas when I get out there. My lovely Dancing Dawn and give you another big sloppy hug out there. Love you, honey. So y'all take care and have a wonderful night. Woo! Woo! Good night. See you in Mexico.